Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're gonna allow our app to share. And so Windows 8 has a common way to allow sharing and searching across all apps called Charms. And so I'm sure you've seen Charms at work. We've used it a couple times already. There's a number of ways to kind of activate this. I'm just gonna hover my mouse cursor in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. And when I do, the Charm bar pops out. And there are two features that we're gonna add in the uh, coming hands-on lab, and that is searching and sharing. So uh, to kind of see this in action, what I'm gonna do is kind of set up the example per the instructions in our working with contracts search and share. Uh, we're gonna look at the exercise number one, add recipe sharing. And if you were to scroll down a little bit further, they make this a uh, note about this share target sample app. Um, you can find this out on MSDN and download it and install it. It's the sharing contract target app sample. I'll leave the link for you in the notes at the very uh, top of this, uh, of this page on channel nine where you have the descriptive text. It might be a little bit under the video itself. So what I did was I went to this page, I downloaded this JavaScript version of the file uh, and I extracted the zip file to my hard drive in a directory that I just called share. And so inside of the share folder, there's a subdirectory called JavaScript. And inside of here, you have the source code for the share target example. So I just double clicked on the solution file, which popped open my copy of Visual Studio. So now let's see this in action. I'm gonna go ahead and run the app. And you can see uh, we get the splash screen and just the, uh, the app is now waiting for something to share to it. It is going to receive the share. Uh, it's on the receiving end of the, of the contract. I'm gonna go out to the start page and I'm gonna open up the Photos app. And so I, have, I happen to have one photo. I'm not even sure when I did this, but this is a really poor image, but it'll suffice for our purposes here. I'm gonna right click and uh, just make sure it's selected. And then I'm gonna go over here to the charm bar, activate it and select share. And when I do, it shows me a list of apps that can receive this photo. It, they have uh, published the fact that, hey, we are receivers. So you kind of are integrating with Windows so that you tell Windows, I can share, you know, and we'll see how this works with uh, searching too in the next lab. But at any rate, if I were to select share target JS sample, uh, it will tell us that it is about ready to receive this file. Now it's gonna ignore the file because the only thing that it really needs to do is just prove that the share has happened. But it tells me a little bit about what is about to be shared. Uh, one photo from the Photos app. Here's the file name and the URI where it grabs it from. Uh, in this case, it's SkyDrive. And uh, it says your share target should report completed after the share task completes successfully. So in code, we would say success if we were on the receiving end, in this case, we're, they have a button for us to click to report that the share has completed successfully. All right, so uh, that's how sharing works in Windows 8. And now we wanna implement at least a portion of this in our Contoso Cookbook app. Let's see what it currently does. So back over here, I left the share target running. I'm gonna minimize that for the moment. I'm gonna come back over here to the Contoso Cookbook and I've changed this to run on my local machine just to make sure I'm targeting this correctly. And I'm going to go into one of the recipe items and then go over here to the activate the share charm. And it says this app can't share. So that's ultimately what we want to accomplish in this lesson. Our goal is to uh, be able to, to add the feature to the Contoso cookbook that allows us to share recipes with other apps like the the share target demo that we just looked at a second ago. So for the sake of demo, we're simply trying to share this, uh, this with the share target sample, but it should be able to share with any app, uh, including email and so forth, the other ones that we saw listed just a moment ago. So this sharing give and take is accomplished through a contract. Uh, and I promise to give you this like so, and you promise to receive this like so. And if we both find common ground through the terms and conditions of the contract, then we can work together. So the Windows runtime enforces and enables contract, uh, the contract and the sharing portion of all of this. And as we'll learn, the key to getting this to work is to listen for events that are raised by 
the data transfer manager. So this is this built-in app class will raise events when the share charm is invoked by the user and your app is currently running in the forefront. In response to the uh, data requested event, you can create an event handler and set the data package's title, description, and text that's to be copied to the ultimate target. All right. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and get back out. Let's stop running our app and now let's we'll do a little Windows management here. And let's close this down. And just to refresh here, we are going to start in. Uh, we've already accomplished task number one by walking through and proving that our app currently cannot share. So now let's implement the sharing. So here we are in task number two, implement recipe sharing. Uh, let's open up the item detail because we want to share details about the individual recipe item. So here we are back in the Contoso cookbook. Let's go to the pages subfolder, the item detail, and the item detail.js. And let me improve the font size here just a little bit. Great. And uh, I think if we take a look at the instructions, it says open the item detail.js and add the following statements near the top of the file after the use strict statement. So merely here, we're going to alias storage and this data transfer manager that I just briefly mentioned a moment ago. Uh, let's go ahead and copy that and paste it in place here. Let's go back to the next step, remove the var from the first line of the ready function so that it looks like this. All right, so we've already declared item. And so why are we removing the var? Because we simply don't want to, uh, we want this to be more, a, a little bit more global in scope uh, to, the, to the function, not just to the ready function to the ready event handler, because uh, we're gonna use it a, a little bit later in another, uh, in another event handler or function. All right, so back to the instructions. Let me close this down, I'm confusing myself here. All right, and then add the following code to the bottom of the ready function. So we're registering for data requested events for sharing. So this page is saying, hey, I can share. So let me tell Windows that I can share for the current view, add a listener data requested. So when somebody goes down and says, in the charm bar, bar, let's share, my app says, oh yeah, I can share Windows, all right? So that's what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and copy this. And notice that that's on a page by page basis. We're not sharing from the entire app, but just because we're on a specific recipe item, it wouldn't make sense to do it in the context of the whole app unless we're trying to share the entire cookbook, right? So let's go ahead and copy this and then put this at the very bottom of the ready function. All right, so I'm thinking that's right about here. Great. Let's go ahead and save that. Next up, we want to finish up by adding the following functions after the ready function. Note that you'll need to add a comma after the closing curly brace of the ready function. Gotcha. So this is, we're handling now an event on data requested, and that's going to get fired off by Windows 8, uh, specifically the Windows runtime. And essentially what we want to do is go ahead and create a request object. Uh, and so it's going to give us this input parameter, which will be a data requested event. And so we'll want to handle the request by giving it the data it needs. So we're setting the data properties. We're also going to set text, uh, which will be just this string that we're concatenating together with ingredients and directions. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. Notice also when we unload, we're also removing the event listener and saying, okay, we're moving off from the item detail page. Now let's say we're no longer listening for the Windows 8 uh, search charm. Okay. So we're deactivating that feature. Let's go ahead and copy all this and we're putting it after, and it encouraged us to make sure that we add a comma before we paste all this in. Okay. And that looks good. All right. So here again, we're going to try that, what we did just a little bit ago and attempt to, uh, to do the share and see what happens. So let's go ahead and run this. We're going to go to a specific uh, recipe item and I'm going to go out to share. And this time you can see that uh, notice that we have the, the title and a short description of what we're about to share. 
And then if we, uh, here are the items that we can target, the share target JS sample. If you don't see this, you then you somehow stopped that share target JS example from running. So make sure you're running before you attempt this. Open this up. And now you can see the text that we're actually going to share out. Awesome. Let's go ahead and report completed. And that's all we needed to do. Outstanding. Now, you may have noticed that we only shared the text. What about sharing the image? I believe that's what's coming up here in task number three. Okay, so we're gonna go back to the item detail.js and we're gonna add some code to the on data requested. What code? The code to implement the recipe image sharing. So what we'll need to do is get a, uh, we're gonna need to get a URI, and this is going to take a little bit of work to construct it. We want to get the file name of, of the image file, so that's why we're choosing this background image that'll give us the actual file name. And then we're going to append on this MS APPX, which just says look in the app's resources, okay, as opposed to someplace online through HTTP or some other, uh, some other destination. That's all this little extension MS dash APPX colon slash 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 plus the file name will give us, all right? So now we're gonna create a proper URI and pass that URI to a function inside of the windows.storage, because we aliased that earlier, dot streams dot random access stream reference dot create from URI, URI. So now we're getting a in-memory stream of the data that composes the actual image file. And then we want to set the bitmap the actual streamed file uh, as data that we're going to pass in to the request. So now the shared contract should know uh, on the receiving end the uh, a, 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 a thumbnail of of the image that will be that will be uh, sharing over there. So let's go ahead and do this on data requested. Here we're going to go here, paste all that in. Looks great, and I believe that's all we really need to do. Just get a URI. Make sure we get a file stream that represents the bits for the file and then set the bitmap using that file stream uh, for display. Okay, so let's run our app. Go to, uh, let's go do, just to prove that this works to carrot salad this time. Go over here in the lower right hand corner to activate the share charm. And let's go ahead and select the share target JS sample. And notice that we get the thumbnail and the entire bitmap, outstanding, and as well as the uh, the the text for the ingredients and the directions. All right, very cool. Okay, so that was pretty painless, right? Uh, we can now copy recipe data into other apps, like email, for example, so we can send it to a friend. What if we want to be able to search for a given recipe, even if our Contoso cookbook currently isn't in the forefront? Well, in the next lesson, we're going to learn how to enable searching from the search charm. See you then. Thank you.